Hello everybody, and just here, and welcome back to Symphogear G Season 2, Episode 4. Uh, happy Easter to my Patreons, to my non-Patreons, happy whatever day it is. Have a nice day, a day nicer than mine. I just had to change my clothes and clean up my room because I spilled this motherfucker. <laughs> First time I'm having yerba mate in years, and I fucking spill it. But hey, here we are, finally. Uh, I'm redoing this intro because I spilled it during that intro. <laughs> Thankfully, I haven't started watching the anime yet. Uh, but let's not talk about my misadventures with herbal tea. Uh, let's talk about Simphogear, and uh, in particular, let's talk about the previous episode, episode 3. Um, episode 3 uh, fleshed out our villains ever so slightly. Uh, we still don't know much about them, least of all their motivations, because I still have my doubts that their actual motivation is world domination. Uh, it feels very moustache twirly, and uh, I I don't think Symphogear would have mustache twirly villains. It's not the kind of show. The villains should have some depth. And um, if they manage to revive Nephilim, thanks to Hibiki's phony gain, uh, which makes me wonder if Nephilim is an artifact, and if Nephilim is an artifact, can there be other sentient animal creature kind of artifacts that's certainly an uh, interesting thought um, what else happened uh, some additional interactions between mother uh, her three daughters daughters and uh, the doctor which makes me question uh, their motivations even more who is being controlled by who who's gonna betray who because I am 90% 90 per, 90 sure that someone is going to betray someone else. Whether it's gonna be uh, Maria and her uh, Balkan skull that will uh, betray Mother, whether it will be Mother that betrays them, uh, Professor that betrays Mother, Mother betraying Professor, someone's gonna betray someone. I'm 100% sure of that. Uh, because there is a lot of tension within that little system of theirs. There is a lot of um, various kinds of resentment, I feel. And uh, again, it very much reads to me like the situation between Chris and uh, Chris and uh, Fine, where Chris was wronged by the world, and uh, Fine promised her that she will get her revenge and she will make the world a better place so that nobody ever will have to suffer what she suffered through. I'm very much getting the exact same vibes. Uh, that mother just got those three children from fuck knows where, and they were wronged by the world. I mean, we, we can, you know, suppose as much uh, during the... Uh, uh, seen uh, under the showers, there was some hints at the twin tails being super angry at the world, I guess, and uh, mother just gave them an outlet, a uh, um, a way to live a good life and whatnot. It very much reads like it to me, and uh, when they learn that. There is another way that you don't have to destroy the world to have a good place in that world, that you don't have to be villains because there are friends all around. Uh, I can't imagine they would like Mother's Lies very much and the fact that she's been keeping them for years in some shoddy-ass abandoned hospital with industrial showers and whatnot. Holy shit. <laughs> Mm. Anything else of significance? The gas. The anti symphogear gas. I have absolutely no clue what the deal with it is. 
Is it perhaps uh, another relic that's able to emit that kind of gas? Is it the power of some symphogear? Is the mother and uh, the uh, professor, do they make such a power duo of geniuses that they just devised a gas that can jump symphogear power? I don't know. But it's yet another variable and yet another thing that is extremely, extremely curious. You know? How? Why? Wherefore? Right? All sorts of questions. And uh, of course, by the end, Maria appeared uh, to um, save uh, Nephilim. Right, because Nephilim was uh, placed in a cage. It apparently listens to the professor. And Professor used some noise monster to carry the Nephilim away for some reason. And the Professor seems to have a complete disregard for his own safety. Because he doesn't give a fuck that he's been captured by our main girls. And it's all kind of super weird. And now Maria is here with her black Gangnir. Uh, proudly professing that she is Fine. And uh, I still don't believe her. I still don't believe her. I still I still don't believe that she is Fine. She can keep repeating it, how many, however many times it takes. I still have my doubts. I still do have my doubts. Uh, the demeanor and her position as a mere goon, they're not Fine. She is not Fine. She cannot be. She cannot be. You don't create a character so haughty and high and mighty as Fine, and have her be a goon that uses a bootleg armor, right? You don't do that. Uh, but to make sure what's gonna happen, and uh, what's what, and uh, what not, uh, we have to watch this episode. So, subs, sound, and uh, hopefully no more accidents. I sucked up a lot of dried leaves with my first sip. That's my least favorite part of Yerba Mate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's some strong shit. <laughs> As I said, been years since I drank it last and I'm, I'm not used to the taste anymore. Uh, but I can see we're already starting in Medias Res. First frame is a frame with uh, Black Gangnir, so let's see what's what, and uh, start episode 4 of Simple Gear version with subs by D-Track in 3, 2, 1, go. Cool. Keep telling yourself that. <laughs> Sorry, I had to chew through the sleeves. <laughs> My bet. My bet is uh, Mother is using Maria as Pseudofine to control the organization named after Fine, right? How can you... How can you defy a person your organization was named after, right? That kind of deal. And uh, the professor seems like a devout follower of Fine, so that would be another reason to fabricate a Fine. At least... Uh, Again, that's the vibe I'm getting. I'm not sure how correct I am. I don't think we'll know how right I am until later in the show, very much later. But, yeah. There were some uh, two girls as children, uh, which again leads me to believe that uh, Mother rescued 
a couple of children in dire straits. Uh, there was a scene of black and white Gangnir morphing into hands, which makes me believe that uh, Maria will join us, thanks to um, Hibiki. A lot of symbolism, very simple symbolism, but symbolism nonetheless. Are you sure about that? Can't you just scan her wave form or some other technical mumbo jumbo? I guess we're just chilling now. Was it Pine who said it, or was it Ryoko? That's a question. Your next move should be to fucking run because Tsubasa is going after your ass. I guess she washed off the Symphogear impeding gunk. I love that Maria fights with her cape. Sword, gun, fist, eh? Twin tails? Cape? Those are weapons. <laughs> the music, though. Immortal Flame. Hmm. I have my thoughts about this song. I have my thoughts about this song. Spin to win again, her signature move. Okay, her power is still blocked somehow, and somewhat. Just gonna let him stand there. 
I guess you are. Hey, Ligma. <laughs> of course, her song is about Grim Reapers and elegies. I cursed my unfair future, I was angry at myself, a lot of anger, a lot of resentment that the mother surely capitalized on. And she has a monowheel now. A fucking twin tails monowheel, why not? There was a frame of Chris's ass. Thank you, animators. And she just slides by. All that was missing is if she was deposing <laughs> to assert her dominance. Oh wow, a hilt strike. I guess not necessarily a hilt strike. Hmm. Can she not use... Mm. Oh... So she doesn't have innate... Sync rate. She's an artificial user. Interesting. Question is why? Like hell you are. Props for this uh, Vito, by the way. It's CG, but it actually looks good. Hell yeah! Time for some anti-material sniper action. It's gonna disappear one... Uh, it's gonna disappear last second, isn't it? Yep. Shoot! You had it in your sights! It didn't fucking teleport, it just disappeared. It's still there. Yeah. Ah, yes, something we don't know. It must be heresy. It's probably this thing. Okay, yeah. Okay, so the doctor acted on his own. I like spiky hat.
They're gonna start kidnapping virgins around the world? Yet, because this isn't Ryoko, and this isn't Fine. Maria is neither of those people. <laughs> Just keep punching until things get better. That's essentially what Genjuro is saying. <laughs> and then there's this dude, always eating. Yeah, parallel uh, research makes sense. And the FNA was conspiring with the Americans. What would that... I guess... I guess I can assume what the reason for taking up that name would be. But hey, let's not worry about that, we have a school festival to attend. Interpersonal drama? More drama between Hibiki and Miku? Please don't. Don't do me like that. Don't do me like that. They, their relationship suffered enough. Oh, Balk and Skull are tailing her. To kidnap Miku so they are able to blackmail Hibiki? Just my assumption. I love her useless glasses. <laughs> A noble goal. No, I guess you're out. That's what a yandere would say. <laughs> uh, I want to preserve her smile in resin. <laughs> okay, I guess they're just having fun at a school festival.
I mean, makes sense. Eventually, Hibiki is gonna get hungry, so she will head somewhere to eat. So, sure, it's a plan. Okay, so Nephilim feeds on relic fragments. Hmm. Merely a challenge. Hmm. That's not how it worked originally. Finet possession works by Finet just overriding the person the moment she hears Auvahen waveforms. It doesn't grow stronger with time. Hmm, what's the deal? What's the deal with Fine? Running from responsibilities. A play? Who's Chris gonna be? She gonna sing? Chris, who hated singing so much in the first season, is gonna sing on stage. You better not eat them, though. I thought for a moment that she brought her a head of lettuce. <laughs> but it's just a green package. <laughs> Chris has warmed up to living the school life. Didn't she? Slowly but surely. She very much does. Oh, they're feeling something, all right? <laughs> oh, they're feeling something.
You could say she was a little bit of a Yukine Onna, eh? <laughs> she better not melt that she now that she warmed up. Now Yukine has another reason to fight, so she can continue singing. The place I can call home. Someone destroys the school and Chris gets fucking pissed. <laughs> there we go. Deserved. Balkan skull? Balkan skull. I mean, it's better to have a song battle on stage than a battle to life and death, right? <laughs> uh, school gets destroyed. Chris gets pissed. There we go. Another theory noted. Uh, there we go. Let's go through this episode again, as usual. Last time on Dragon Ball Z. Uh, right, this little bit. Yeah, just a, a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. God damn it, where is it? Oh, uh, you know what moment I meant. The uh, black Gangnir and white Gangnir turn into hands and just grasp each other and merge into a yin yang. You know what I meant. Men, <laughs> you know what I mean. Mm. Okay, let's continue. Uh, the reincarnated Fine herself is leading the organization. Hmm. With every. Passing uh, moment with every passing reference to Fine, I'm kind of doubting myself more and more. But also, my theory about Maria not really being Fine is getting reinforced more and more. It's a weird, weird situation because every time. I'm getting some information that would confirm uh, Maria being Fine. There also comes a bit of information that makes me think, hey, that that's not how it worked. And kind of gets me back to, to thinking that she's not Fine after all. It's weird. Little bit of a fight. Uh, the faith in my heart is like an undying fire. No one can put it out. An immortal flame. That's another thing that made me think of Fine. An immortal flame. Fine herself being Im immortal. Uh, even if it burns my body to ashes, I don't mind dying for the way I believe in. For the dream I will forever sing. There's no need for tears. I make up my mind as I make a proud oath. Uh, yeah, there's something, um, some thoughts I had on uh, Maria singing, and uh, I noted them down. Uh, first of all, I don't ever recall Fine singing. Fine was using Symphogear, but at no point did she ever sing. She was using Artifacts, but at no point did she ever sing. Was it because she was only ever using full artifacts, full sinful gear, nothing that was broken? Or is it because she was a literal fucking goddess and just didn't need to sing? Well, not a literal goddess, a 
more like a demigod, I guess. Uh, another thing. Uh, in Maria's song, there aren't any references to the curse, which is dispelling this curse is Finae's goal. There is nothing about Lulu Amel, which the goal of Finae is uh, making sure Lulu Amel gets rid of the curse and they can communicate with each other again. Uh, there is nothing about her love for the creator, nothing of the sort. And those are the most driving forces for Finae. Getting rid of the curse so that people, including herself, can speak directly to God. And uh, the songs of characters who use sinful gear, the songs are manifestations of their mental state and of their desires. So either Finé just like that changed what she wants and who she is into a song about not crying, not letting go, uh, lighting the dark of the night with a song and all that stuff. Or is it actually Maria singing? Right? Songs being as significant for this series as they are, Maria's song being this and not something else is also significant. And of course, they didn't do anything about the Doctor. I mean, fuck, Genjiro could have come out of the submarine, just grabbed him in a chokehold and dragged him underneath, or whatever the fuck, right? I guess they didn't feel the need to? Who knows? And of course, she has a song about despair and death and fear. I cursed my unfair future. If the pain is too much for you, I hold your hand because I know in my heart that friendship requires true strength and courage. Hard to think, figure out what her song is really about. I mean, it certainly is about some uncertain future and uh, probably less than stellar past. That much is clear. Then there's friendship. Does she have a deep friendship with Twin Tails? And uh, that's what she's singing about? I'm not sure. Also, this bit. Her just casually sliding. I don't know why it's so funny to me. I know it's, it was probably on purpose that it probably isn't an animation error. That she's just a literal sliding PNG, but... It, 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 it's, it's just too funny to not point out. Uh, of course, they're losing, but not entirely. Uh, Maria can be damaged. And uh, her synchronization is falling. Because she can no longer go on with her sinful gear. Because she is an imposter. She doesn't have a natural synchronization. She has to use. Uh, she had to use the drug to be uh, synchronized with Simfugir. That's certainly her weakness. But. Hmm. That again kind of makes me wonder about Fine. Do you need the ability to synchronize to be Fine? Was Ryoko able to come in sync with Symphogear or with artifacts? I'm not sure. And uh, kind of weird that Chris didn't decide to shoot. I mean, you had it in your sights, sure, it disappeared, but it didn't teleport. Just press the trigger. Worst thing that happens, you miss. Like, it, it's not like you have 
ammo reserves and you you have to count every single shell you can just shoot you miss nothing happens you hit you shoot down the vital eh kind of kind of a weird decision and of course she's using some sort of an artifact to cloak uh, their vital while analyzing the capabilities of Shinshu Jing from Mount Minakami. Hmm. Now, I acquired stealth technology while analyzing the capabilities of the Shen Shenshu Jing, which makes me wonder. Again, kind of going back to the theory of fake gears and fake artifacts. She didn't say that she's using the Shenshu Jing to cloak their VTOL. She's saying that she acquired this technology while analyzing this particular artifact. I don't know if I might be reading too much into it, but it sounds to me like she just took the technology, she somehow managed to reverse engineer the artifact and create a fake artifact of her own, kind of sort of deal. At least that's that's kind of the vibe I'm getting. Which makes me think Gangnir isn't legit either, it's again just a recreation. I don't know. And yeah, she doesn't have a long time to live, seemingly. Yeah, it's calm and it needs relic fragments to live. Uh, and uh, that's interesting. That's super interesting. Because for some reason, they value Nephilim more than they value relic fragments, right? Yeah, they'd rather feed Ame no Habakiri to Nephilim than come into possession of Ame no Habakiri. Hmm. <laughs> Is Nephilim really that powerful to outweigh the power of however many relic shards they've already fed it? Or do they have a deeper motive of trying to get the world rid? of relics so that only they have them? Hmm. It's certainly significant and certainly interesting, but I'm honestly not sure what the deal is here. Is it just for quote-unquote shock value that, oh, this thing is eating relic fragments? Or is there actual significance to the fact that it's eating relic fragments? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, they're Americans, they were conducting their own research, and here we have the uh, school festival. And a performance, and a song, and those useless fucking glasses. Why? Those are glasses for her tear ducts, tear ducts, not for her eyes. Not even, not even for her tear ducts. It, her glasses are like my glasses, those rubber thingies that sit on my nose. Those are, that's the entirety of her glasses. It's so stupid, I love it. <laughs> and of course they want a... Uh, anime song club and Electro Inspector Bang 
Sure. Why not? Cool songs and cool visuals, but apparently the jury didn't like it. And those two are as much of a goober as always. Uh, twin tails, always angry. Pointy hat, always a goober. And they are here on a mission to fetch relic fragments. And uh, of course, they target Tsubasa because why not? I guess. Sure. Go ahead. And Chris is singing. Uh, but let's go back to those two for a moment. Uh, scenes like this really make me think. Really make, or rather, really make me solidify my prediction that they will join sooner or later, but they absolutely will. Um, there were a lot of casual moments like that shown with Chris. Not many casual moments with uh, Ryoko or with Fine. Here it's the same. A lot of casual moments with those two. Some casual moments with Maria, I'm assuming, will come next. Not many casual moments with Mother or with the Professor. And uh, those two are put on the first uh, first plan, first plane, whatever you want to call it. And uh, Maria isn't shown to be with them, which makes me wonder, are those two gonna join first? And then, somehow, the five of them will convince Maria to join. That's an option. That's certainly an option. And Chris gets to sing. Uh, I mentioned um, Chris's transformation, being all cute, all ribbons and cute boots and the cute skirt and whatnot. And someone left a comment under the previous video saying the cutest transformation for the cutest character. And uh, I'm inclined to agree. <laughs> After this scene, of Chris singing, I am inclined to agree. Cutest transformation for the cutest character. Coralis mundi, ut gaudium important supportarent. Twin Tails is feeling something. She's feeling something. I'm not sure what name to use for it, but she's feeling something. <laughs> it's like that... Uh, I'm, I, I'm gonna have to consult Google again to find the exact thing I wanna find. Uh, yeah, that's, that's the exact thing I wanted to find. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, can I... Copy image and paste it right here. No, I cannot. Um, open image uh, in new tab. Open the tab. There we go. And window capture. That's her right now. That's her. <laughs> She's feeling something. She's feeling something, all right. All blushing and holding her chin and wavy eyebrows. Bedroom eyes. Jesus Christ. She's horny for Chris, isn't she? I don't blame her. I really don't. But dun dun dun! The main bosses of the stage have appeared. I love her little bat wings on the back of her shirt. 
also her thighs are riding into her thigh flesh the point where they the, the thigh flesh bulges out chef's kiss <laughs> there we go there we go that was episode 4 of simple gear g That was episode four. Uh, I just noticed. Uh, I noted uh, the school festival gets attacked. It's not an attack yet. Maybe it will happen, maybe it won't. Uh, school gets destroyed, Chris gets pissed. I uh, wholeheartedly believe that that to be the case sooner or later. Uh, I'm gonna quickly read through my other theories. Hmm... Maria pretends to be Fine, that hasn't been confirmed, hasn't been denied. I mean, they surely try to deny... Why am I wearing those? Motherfucking cables. I mean, they surely try to deny that uh, Marie, that Maria isn't Fine. They sure try to convince us that she is Fine. But I still have my doubts. Uh... Artificial gears and artifacts are weaker than real ones. I'm still not sure about whether or not artificial gears and artifacts exist. Uh, Lulu Amel equals humans. Hasn't it been basically confirmed? I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a check mark. Uh, oh right, and the final theory. Mom turns into a monster and the six of them have to fight it. Well, of course, we aren't anywhere near uh, that sort of a resolution, so I can verify uh, that theory of mine. Um, overall, cool episode. A lot of singing. A lot, a lot of singing. Uh, we got uh, singing from Maria. We got singing from uh, Pointy Hat. Uh, we got singing from Chris. Uh, we got singing from uh, uh, from the anime trio. We got a lot of singing. It was very much a downtime episode uh, that kind of gives us uh, a little bit of time to relax after the intense battle of the previous episode with their simple gears being uh, turned off. Well, not turned off, but weakened. Uh, with the uh, Nephilim running rampant and all of that. And I'm assuming it's also preparing us for shit to get real again. Actually, I have another theory. I have another theory. I'm not sure how feasible it is. But uh, Chris and um, Tsubasa lose their gears. Yep, that's my theory. They will lose them at some point, and uh, only Hibiki can fight. Because, after all, she has the sinful gear in her heart. Literally and figuratively. Uh, there's... Um, it's... Maybe not often used trope, but it certainly is a sometimes used trope where characters that can fight only because of something lose that something, and characters that can fight even without that something are left to fight alone. Alternatively, uh, the characters that lose that something learn to fight without that something, but I'm not entirely sure how feasible it is in the case of Simple Gears. Uh, they aren't using their martial arts and whatnot. They need those Simple Gears, they need those relics that create them to be able to fight. Sure, Tsubasa could probably hold, hold her own in just a plain sword fight, but a sword, a katana, that's just made of regular steel, or shitty Japanese still can't just defeat the noise. She needs a simple gear. 
unless there's gonna be some bullshit like the real sympathy was in your heart all along and they can just hench in without any relics that'd be kind of a cop-out but also kind of cool not gonna lie hmm but yeah i'm trying to go way 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 ahead in time uh, i'm not gonna do that right now my prediction uh, Bulk and Skull are gonna sing, they're gonna have an intense rap battle with Chris, and they're gonna have fun, and their conviction is gonna be shaken up a little bit. Just my prediction. Just my prediction. They will have fun at the festival, they will perhaps talk with uh, Hibiki and uh, Tsubasa and Chris, or maybe just Hibiki, or maybe just Chris, and they will form some sort of a, you know, beginning of a friendship, maybe, kinda, sorta, I'm not sure, but they are here for a reason, uh, storytelling-wise, because their reason to be here is to steal uh, relics, steal the Simple Gear from uh, Tsubasa and I'm assuming Chris, uh, but story-wise, they are here so that the process of assimilation can begin. And that's what I think is going to happen in the next episode. Yeah, I think that's it. Uh, I think I talked about everything that needed to be talked about. So now it's your turn to talk about things that you want to talk about down in the comments. Uh, what did you think of this episode? What did you think of my reaction, of my theories? Just as always, I have to ask you to keep it spoiler-free. Uh, I want to experience it myself completely and utterly blind. Uh, leave a like if you liked it, leave a dislike if you disliked it, but tell me why so I can improve. Subscribe to the channel to be notified of future releases. And not only Simfugir, but also review Starlight, that's another non-seasonal show I'm watching. Um, Skeleton Knight in Another World, Shield Hero Season 2, Spy X Family, and uh, Shokei Shoujo of Virgin Road, which is a great series, by the way. You might want to give it a watch. Um, you can support me monetarily and do it on Patreon. Link in the description for 10 bucks a month to get early access to non seasonal shows like Simple Gear, uh, like uh, Virgin Road, not Virgin Road, Virgin Road is seasonal, uh, like Simple Gear, and like. Review Starlight, those are non seasonals. And for just a dollar, you get access to my special channel on my Discord server, and it gives you an orange name and it gives you access to that channel that I already mentioned. And I'm sometimes posting like sneak peeks and stuff there. So if you want some added content, just a dollar is enough. Uh, join my Discord server, link is right here. Uh, you can come hang around talk about anime. There are spoiler tags on Discord, so we can talk spoilers with fellow fans of a given series, and I'm not gonna click them, I'm not gonna get spoiled, but you will be able to talk about things and stuff. Share this video. That's the last thing I have to share. Uh, share this video with other people, with people who you know would enjoy it, because the more you spread the word about my channel and about my content, the more YouTube itself spreads that word, and it helps me immensely in uh, achieving organic growth for the channel. So, that's gonna be it from me for today. So as always, do all the good stuff. And uh, I'm gonna see you guys in the next one. Cheers! And here's yet another benefit every patron gets. They get to be in the credits of my videos.